if abdominal breathing and finding the ability to breathe into the lowest lobes of the lung is difficult or confusing, um, if it's counterintuitive to relax the belly on the inhalation and contract the abdominal core on the exhalation, the best way to find the belly and the abdominal breath is to do a side twist in a laying position on your mat. So taking the hips, two femur bones, stacking each hip to each side and feeling the twist in the spine and the ability to twist with the rib cage, the arms in an external and open position gives the chest capacity and the rib cage the ability to be up in gravity and the rest of the internal organs to be against gravity. And when you lift the ribs up, you create the vacuum that causes the lungs to open and automatically, well, feel for yourself. But um, if there's a change in sensation in the abdominal breath and the ability to control it with the mouth, feel it, experience it, see how it works for you. So going on to your side, stacking one on top of the other. The leg that's on the floor is straight. So hips being stacked as best you can in line with the head so that the spine is twisting but not torqued. So if my shoulders were too far off to the side or my head was angled this way or my hips weren't stacked correctly, then the spine is not being in the um, proper orientation for the twist. So, stacking in the hips, opening the arms, both externally rotated and shoulder blades are moving away from the spine and then back down. looking to the opposite side from where the knee is being angled down. Include the cervical spine and thoracic spine in the twist. So if you weren't looking, and you're not adding in the rest of the ribs when you open the upper chest by looking in the other direction. So I'm looking this way, just noticing the um, limitation of the breath. It pretty much ends right here. But still reflexively goes down to the lower lobes. Now if I include my head and the twisting of the spine, when the open part of the chest is automatically noticed or felt. I could pretty much unwind myself completely by uh, looking the other direction and allowing for the chest and the cartilage against the sternum to angle up and out and to be able to fill the top lobes of the lung. just keep continuing. It feels like I can get more and more breath and I'm hoping that the angle of the camera is actually working to um, show any of this. So if you have any questions, this was the first attempt at showing some of the um, physics and the gravitational effect of our body in Earth on a gravitational pull and how our breath becomes our flotation device. It's buoyancy and Thanks, Nanda. That was very, very helpful. So the, the comparison is um, by floating on your back in a body of water, when you have a full breath and being able to float on your back in a body of water in a lake or in the ocean 
and on the exhale, knowing that you're not going to be on your back anymore. You're going to have to die and pedal unless you take another breath to keep you afloat. So our body in water will float as long as our flotation device is enacted and maintained active by pausing the breath on the inhalation at the end of the exhalation, getting a sense of the control that you do have with the abdominal muscles, all the accessory muscles, the throat, the tongue, all of that will help in floating in air because you're using air in air. It's like we use air when we're in a body of water because we are 60-ish percent water. So all of these concepts, um, by physics at least, become really interesting and useful when we think about it. So feel it and...